very much, Jeff and friends. It's indeed a pleasure to be back here. I have the honor this afternoon to introduce three guests, uh, one of whom is Jeffrey Stone. First, though, I'd like to introduce Robert H. Jackson, uh, by now perhaps well known to some of you, to others perhaps a new acquaintance. Robert Jackson sprang from this soil in this region and rose to great heights nationally and internationally. He was born in Spring Creek, Pennsylvania in 1892. He grew up north of the state line in New York State in the little town of Frewsburg and graduated from its public schools. At age 17, he rode the trolley north to Jamestown and spent an additional year as a postgraduate student at the Jamestown High School. He then became, by apprenticing, plus one year of classroom education at the Albany Law School, a lawyer based largely in Jamestown. And over 20 years, 1914 to 1934, he rose to be a very renowned and successful young lawyer in Jamestown, in western New York, in the state of New York, and indeed nationally. He also was involved in democratic politics, and over those 20 years had become an incre increasingly close confidant of Franklin Roosevelt, who brought him to Washington in 1934, and moved Jackson up through an increasingly responsible set of executive branch positions, culminating in his service as Solicitor General and then Attorney General of the United States. And then in 1941, Roosevelt appointed Jackson to the Supreme Court of the United States. Jackson served as our 82nd Justice for a short period of time, relatively speaking, only 13 years, but left a truly distinguished mark on American Supreme Court and legal and constitutional history. He also distinctly, uh, uniquely, served on leave from the Supreme Court during 1945-1946 as the chief United States prosecutor of the principal surviving Nazis at Nuremberg, Germany. Now, Supreme Court justices come and go in the literal sense that we all do, but some uniquely stay in the power of their example, their life, their accomplishments, their thinking, and their words. And what we're seeing half a century on from Jackson's own lifespan is he, he is uniquely one of those people. That's what the Robert H. Jackson Center in Jamestown is about, and that is what this collaboration, the inaugural Robert H. Jackson Lecture here at Chautauqua Institution, recognizes today. That's my first impression. And then to U.S. Supreme Court Justice William J. Brennan during the court year 1972-19. He is the provost of the University of Chicago from 1993 to 2002. Today, having completed those university and administrative responsibilities, Jeffrey Stone has returned to the faculty, to teaching, and to an incredibly prolific scholarship as the Harry Calvin Jr. Distinguished Service Professor at the Law School at the University of Chicago. Jeff Stone is a leading scholar of the Supreme Court of American Constitutional Law, and in particular, the First Amendment. His most recent book, which I display for you, is the truly wonderful Perilous Times, Free Speech in Wartime, from the Sedition Act of 1789 to the War on Terrorism. And that will be an area of his general discussion today. This book, a bestseller, uh, has recently been recognized by, among others, the Los Angeles Times as an outstanding book, the American Political Science Association, and it has won the Robert, a Robert F. Kennedy Prize for outstanding writing. Um, it's a book I've read. And I've read it repeatedly. I'm actually carrying the copy that is filled with my notes and stuck in it are pages with more notes. It's that good. Uh, so after you're listening, I have that to commend his reading. And that's my second introduction. My third introduction is a name that I'll be surprised if any of you have heard. James Parker Hall. James Parker Hall, long deceased, might be with us today in a sense. He was born in 1871 in Frewsburg, New York the town where Robert H. Jackson grew up. James Parker Hall also moved north, and he is a graduate of the Jamestown High School, class of 1890, 20 years before Robert Jackson received a diploma from that school in 1910. James Parker Hall then went for college education to Cornell University. He attended the Harvard Law School. He became a member of the New York Bar, and as a young lawyer, he first started his career as an associate in a prominent Buffalo, New York law firm. He also, while practicing in Buffalo, became a part-time teacher at the University of Buffalo School of Law. And after two years juggling practice and academia, he felt the pull and moved entirely in the academic direction. He joined the faculty in 1900 of an upstart, obscure Western University 
the Leland Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. After two years out there, he was invited to a new school that was starting. This is at the brink of the 20th century. And so he came to that school in 1902. And in 1904, he became its dean. And he served there for 24 years as its dean until his premature death at the age of 57 in 1928. During that long tenure as a dean, he was also a prolific scholar of constitutional law. And that new law school, circa 1902, was the University of Chicago Law School. In other words, he is a predecessor of Jeff Stone's as the dean of the UFC Law School. But it's better than that. Abraham Lincoln once spoke about the mystic chords of memory that connect us. Well, try these chords on for size or, or for tone. On Monday, July 27, 1908, Chautauqua Institution began a week of lecture programming on the problems of national growth. And the lead lecturer late that morning, 11 a.m., July 27, 1908, in the Hall of Philosophy, speaking on the topic of the constitutional limits of federal regulation of business, was the dean of the University of Chicago Law School, James Parker Hall. Hmm. Robert Jackson, then age 16, was in his junior year at Freeport High School, Paul's alma mater. Robert Jackson, by that summer of 1908, was a regular on these grounds. I don't quite have it yet, but in my imagination, I like to picture him somewhere out near the shrubbery listening to Dean Hall speak on that occasion about the Constitution. I imagine that both of them, James Parker Hall and Robert H. Jackson, would be delighted that this third guest is present with us today. I'm pleased to introduce Dean and Professor and Scholar and Chautauquan Jeffrey Stone. <laughs> 